Let's pretend that you've been invited to make a bungee jump, and we're going to analyze your motion. But before we do, let's do a quick review. If I were to tell you that these two vectors, the velocity vector on the right and the acceleration vector on the left, describe your motion, are you moving up or are you moving down? Well, it's the velocity vector that tells you which direction you're going, and it's pointing down so you're traveling in the downward direction. If I were to ask you, are you speeding up or slowing down? Now you look at the acceleration vector and you look at how that acceleration vector is pointing relative to the velocity vector. When those two vectors are pointing in the opposite direction, that's slowing down. We can think of that acceleration vector as how much the velocity vector changes each unit of time that goes by. In other words, what change would I have to add to that velocity vector in the next second of time? So if I were to ask you, what is that velocity vector going to look like one second later? Well, I would just add that a vector and that would shorten my velocity vector. Each second that goes by, the acceleration vector tells me how much change occurs to the velocity vector. And as seconds go by, the velocity vector gets shorter and shorter until at some instant of time, perhaps I add that acceleration vector and I get zero. That means you're not moving. But are you stopped for an extended period of time or are you just stop for an instant, say at a turnaround point. In this case, if we have the same acceleration, one second later you're going to be traveling upwards. So you've gone from traveling downwards to traveling upwards. That's an acceleration in the upward direction. Now, time to jump. Let's suppose that we take your motion as a bungee jumper and we divide it up into seven motions. The first motion is you standing on the platform, looking over the edge, scared to death. The only thing moving on your body are your knees, and they're shaking. The second motion, you've finally gotten up the courage to step off the platform, and you're falling. In the third motion, the bungee cord has stretched to the point where you are now slowing down as you approach the ground below. Motion 4 is the turnaround point. That's the lowest you're going to get in this bounce. You're now going to start moving back upward. At motion 5, you're speeding up towards the platform. At motion 6, your bungee cord has become slack. You're still rising, but now you're slowing down. And then motion seven is the turnaround point again at the top of your bounce, the highest point you're going to get. And now you're going to drop again for another bounce. Let's look at these seven motions of your bungee jump. And at each of those motions, let's find the direction of the velocity vector and the acceleration vector. Now, we're not going to worry about the magnitude of those vectors. Just which direction do they point? And if one of those vectors is zero, we'll represent that with a dot. Think about your answers for a while. Fill in this table. Let's talk about it together now. At motion one, it's really not a motion. You're standing there. You're scared. It's an emotion, not a motion. At that point, you have no velocity. And because your velocity isn't changing from second to second, you have no acceleration. They'd both be zero. At motion two, you're moving downward, so your velocity vector would point downward. Because you are speeding up, your acceleration vector would point in the same direction as your velocity vector, or downward. At motion 3, you're still moving downward, 
so your velocity vector is still downward. But now the bungee cord is causing you to slow, and when an object is slowing down, the acceleration vector has to point in the opposite direction of the velocity vector. In this case, that would be up. Now we get to the turnaround point at the bottom. At that instant of time, you're not moving. You were moving just before that instant. You will be moving right after that instant. But right at that turnaround point, you're not moving. So your velocity is zero. Is your acceleration also zero? Well, let's think about what that would imply. The acceleration is how much your velocity is going to change in the next second. If you don't have a velocity, if you are stopped, and your acceleration is also zero, you're going to stay stopped. You're just going to dangle at the bottom. But that's not what happens in a bungee jump. And so the acceleration cannot be zero. Indeed, shortly before this turnaround point, you were headed downward. Shortly after this turnaround point, you'll be headed upward. That's a change in the upward direction. Now let's go to to motion 5. You're moving up towards the platform so your velocity vector is up. And the bungee cord is causing you to speed up, to rocket up towards that platform. So your acceleration vector must be in the same direction as the velocity vector. At point 6, you're still moving up towards the platform. But now you're slowing down such that the acceleration vector has to point in the opposite direction of the velocity or down. Motion 7 is another turnaround point. You've reached the highest point in your jump and you're about to fall again for another bounce. At that point, for an instant, your velocity is zero. But again, your acceleration vector cannot be zero or you would just stay there hovering in the air. And that would be spooky. Right before this turnaround point, you were headed in the upward direction. Right after this turnaround point, you'll be headed back down. That's a change in the downward direction.